hi everyone I wanted to show you today how to do little illustrations like this one and this is based on um, another artist who did a beautiful um, tutorial on how to do these uh, hers was a little different and I'll put I'll post a link to hers but I wanted to keep mine a little simple a little different show you a different style you're gonna need one of these uh, my two colors that I will use is thalo uh, crimson and uh, thalo yellow green and these are Grumbachers and uh, you will use uh, round number eight and a round number five you'll also need a pencil I recommend an H and you're gonna need pens uh, if you don't have these fancy pens you can use this one uh, the difference is is that this is just it's not archival quality but it'll still uh, you know you can still watercolor with it uh, with these two these are archival quality you can watercolor with them they're waterproof so is the sharpie that's why I said you can watercolor with it and um, uh, there's two uh, there's many sizes uh, there is this one uh, which is a 0-3 uh, and I believe it's 35 millimeters yep 35 millimeters this one is 25 millimeters but it's a 0.1 uh, or a, a 0-1 I should say and um, these uh, this will do just fine and uh, I also wanted to show paper so uh, here's this is cans um, I'm sorry arches watercolor paper is very stiff and it has a very distinct noise this is uh, Kansan's watercolor paper and it is French watercolor paper uh, it's a little bit more bendy uh, they're both cold press but this one's a little bit more processed um, you, you could just tell that it that the quality is different um, any watercolors done here uh, this purpose this paper is just very thirsty and it will just it will really love your watercolor. It will, it will like wet brushes and any brush, uh, wet brush technique. It, this is the paper you want to use. We are doing wet brush techniques, uh, and, but we're going to use Canson just because it's easier. And uh, the first thing you want to do, I always have a, a catalog nearby something where I can just find a, a point of reference and uh, I just like looking through it and the reason I have a point of reference is, is because you want to see how the fabric will drape onto the subject or onto a mannequin and how the pattern relates to that draping uh, I'm not going to be doing draping uh, well draping per se in the, when it comes to patterning but I am going to be doing some draping so the first thing you want to do is just grab your pencil and you're going to okay here we go so and you're going to start sketching your dress out and I like to like find a middle and uh, it's somewhere in here and, and notice that you're not drawing like this you're drawing sideways and you don't want any pressure marks watercolor paper will show pressure marks and at first it's not gonna look like it's not gonna look like a mannequin or a dress for that matter but you give it shape and and then it'll And uh, you're going to need one of these just to pick up the extra charcoal on the side. And you can even it out as you're drawing. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, sometimes doing a little line like this over the shoulder, it, it helps you tell where it's going to be on the other side. And these do not have to be perfect uh, actually the more imperfect they are the better they look I'm 
this is what I have so far. And I like doing, um, I like doing the legs, so I do a little circle and I draw the little curly legs. And this is how it looks. Okay, so here's here's the finished piece. And I mean, it's not completely finished, but it, it is. Uh, it's just sketched in enough that um, you can start. Just you could you could just take your pen and. I kind of wanted to do this to it. Now you can take your pen and actually um, put the lines in. Uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you're going to have a light source in, in your area, uh, in your imaginary drawing. So if you make the light source here, the shadows will cast on the opposite end. So that's something that you can add um, with your pen. And I am going to use the number three. And the idea is that uh, you're just straightening out the lines and making it more uniform. This. I don't know if you can see it, but yep. This is probably the easiest dress to draw. Um, if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. The idea is that you gesture the dress in. Fashion illustrations are basically uh, gestured forms. And uh, the amount of gesturing is really personal. It's good. It differs from illustrator to illustrator. I like, I like my forms well defined, but I, I still like the hinting of the gesture. I, I like what... I like that a lot. And uh, and I just let the color do the forming now. Uh, this just keeps the form together, but uh, the color will basically give it more of a, of a shape. Okay, so now that we have our form all done, we're going to take our eraser and we're just going to pick up the extra pencil. You can either rub it against it or you could actually just pick it up. It's, it's a neat eraser. And once you clean it up, you're ready to paint. And uh, I'm going to use, because I'm going to use a, a bigger area, I'm going to use this one. And uh, this is the color I'm using. And I've already put a glob of it right there. And the first thing you want to do is this is going to be a wash so you're not really picking up color you're just kind of making a little puddle of color on the dress and I usually test it on the paper towel just to make sure that it's just very light and uh, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not I think that makes it, I think it makes it better when it's not perfect because it gives, uh, makes it more fashion looking. And you could layer, this, this is just a first wash, but you could, you could start layering uh, some of the brush strokes to give it a little bit more dimension, especially here. the darker you go, the more dimension you can give it. And remembering where your point, where your light is coming from, then you can um, really start shadowing this. So, so it reflects that. So my, since my light's coming from this source, this, this is the shadow end. Like 
Now I'm going to wait a little bit so uh, the watercolor will dry and I can give it a couple more, a couple more washes. Okay, so the washes are dry and I'm going to do uh, just adding some more detail to the bust and making it look a little bit more um, real. So, usually put make that yellow. And, uh, uh -huh. right there. So we'll do a little wash here and then we'll add a little bit. This is like raw umber or burnt umber, one of the two. If you can see it. And I like to make the skin on the mannequin uh, like a canvasy color. And I don't know if you can tell, but I, I've made mistakes. The pink actually went into the the uh, bust color, which is fine. Just make sure you add. If you add um, shadows where they belong, uh, you can actually hide that a little more. So, and here's that. I'm going to add the green color for the middle belt here. It's very slight, so if you want to mix it in with another uh, darker green, that's fine too. And I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray at the bottom to cast a shadow. That way it just looks a little real. And uh, very quickly, I'm going to add some streaks of pink here at the top and at the bottom. So here's the final piece and it's almost dry. And um, you can make a million of these because these are so quick. I don't even think I spent a minute on it. Uh, I have a process. Everybody has their own process. And the uh, I'm going to put a link to the uh, to the other artist's um, video. And um, she did she does beautiful illustrations. She's very quick. She's been doing this for a long time. I haven't been doing this for a long time, but I have been watercoloring for a long time. And uh, I, I just like to do it just slightly different. Her, her drawings uh, were very gestured, like I said before, they were very gestured and uh, they were very organic and, and the line work looked a little hairy. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, it just, it's just her style. I like my mine to be a little tighter, to be a little cleaner, to look more like a sketch and uh, you know, it's, I think it's just a matter of preference. Uh, her work just inspired me to to continue to watercolor I just didn't feel like I had a reason to and then that's when I started doing the 30 days of watercolor in my blog and I'll post a link to that too so I just want to thank you so much for watching my little video uh, if you like it please like comment subscribe and I will see you later bye